The BRSCC Mazda MX-5 Super Cup is brought to you by Gaz Shocks and Townsend Vehicle Hire Rugby. We're here at Rocky and Motor Speedway in Corby for the second triple header of the season as the BRSCC Mazda MX-5 Super Cup season for 2016 comes to a close. Pole setter for race one is Jamie Goddard. Alongside him is going to be Jack Harding. Points leader James Boat Baldwin can only make third on the grid alongside race one winner at Donington, Jonathan Greensmith. And a surprising third row because we've got Richard Breland in fifth and Davey Tons the Super Cup in sixth position. Reigning Mark 1 champion Brian Chandler will start sixth. Before we get into the rest of the grid, let's take you over to race commentator Andy McEwen who takes you through two races that were absolutely spectacular last time at Donington. Donington Park, as it always seems to, produced two cracking races last time out, despite inclement weather affecting race one. Tom Roach and Liam Murphy did battle for second place in the wet conditions, allowing Johnny Greensmith to pull away and take a well-deserved first ever win in the championship. He very nearly did the same again in a dry race too, snatching the lead from the start, but he soon got shuffled down the order on lap one before this moment at the end of the lap sent him plummeting to the back of the field. He then though produced one of the drives of his life, carving his way back through the field to briefly get his nose back into the race lead, only for James Blake Baldwin to hang on for the win. Jack Harden came through at the death to take second, whilst Johnny was a very, very satisfied third place. That all means that arriving at the penultimate meeting of the year, Blake Baldwin has just a two-point lead over Tom Roach in the championship, with Johnny Greensmith still with an outside bet in third place, 33 points off the championship lead. Liam Murphy and Jack Harding round out the top five. Race number one of three here at Rockingham then is just about to get underway. The car's on the green flag lap and about to line up. Here's how they do line up. Jamie Goddard and Jack Hardy make a somewhat surprising front row ahead of championship contenders James Blake Baldwin and Johnny Greensmith. Richard Breland lines up on row three alongside Brian Chandler with John Davies and Tom Collins on row four. Tom Roach all the way down on row five alongside Liam Murphy. They should move forward. James Aspinall and Will Chappell on row six. Richard Wickland and Simon Goddard on the seventh row with Gary Townsend and Carl Garnett next. <laughs> row nine for David Henderson and Steve Dolman. Row ten for Jeremy Crook and Ray Ray Worley, row 11, Simon Orange and Simon Fleet, and row 12, Roy Stevenson and David Willoughby, a group of the Masters drivers together, row 13 for Alex King and Jim Hart, row 14, Michael Lawson and Greg Catton, with Ian McDonald at the back of the grid. So cars are lined up on the grid there. Ian McDonald lines up at the back. Pole position for the grey car of Jamie Goddard. The blue, almost STP liveried machine of Jack Harding alongside him. James Blake Baldwin is there on row number two. And James, remember, has that slenderest of leads over Tom Roach in the points. Just two points clear. Away we go. And who makes the best start from the front row? Looks like it's pretty even, really. Goddard on the inside. Harding tries to come down and cover towards the left-hand side of the road through turn one. I think Harding might just snap the lead. Blake Baldwin, Johnny Greensmith have both had good starts as well though and there's Brian Chandler also in the mix going down below the white line as too is Tom Roach trying to make ground from all the way down on the fifth row of the grid down into the breaking zone at the Dean Hairpin hold your breath everybody let's hope they all get through in one piece lots of shuffling mid pack they're three abreast for the race lead though between uh, Jack Harding Johnny Greensmith and I think that was uh, possibly um, James Blake Baldwin in there as well yes it was but it's Harding that comes out in front Blake Baldwin is side by side now with Brian Chandler behind there are cars spinning all over the place oh James Blake Baldwin sideways James Blake Baldwin spins James Blake Baldwin off the track I don't believe in the championship leader is in big big trouble on the first lap of the opening race of the weekend would you believe it how dramatic can this championship get Tom Roach starting all the way down in ninth looks set to lose points to Blake Baldwin this weekend or at least in this first race and all of a sudden Blake Baldwin's at the back of the field so Jack Harding has the race lead who has come through into second after all of that it may well be Johnny Greensmith we'll wait until we check back in with the lead yes it is I can just see off in the distance Johnny Greensmith into second Brian Chandler's third and John Davies are making a welcome return to the championship is there in fourth and Tom Roach remarkably is fifth and now going up the inside of Davies for fourth at Tarzan and I think he's going to go through isn't he? Jamie Goddard's all the way down in sixth position so he's really lost out. There's Gary Townsend dicing with Simon Goddard and James Aspinall a bit further down the order. Where is James Blake Baldwin though? He's all the way down. There he is going up the inside of I think that was Jeremy Crook through the Tarzan hairpin. Well what a dramatic opening that, that was. Jack Harding who remember is looking for his first ever Master MX-5 Super Cup race win in this his second season. We saw John Johnny Greensmith do the, uh, achieve that last time out at Donington Park. Those two, remember, both started racing in this championship at the start of 2015. Greensmith got his first win first. Can Jack Harding now repeat that here at Rockingham? 
I've got plenty of room for five, six, seven, maybe even eight Mazda MX-5s wide on the pitch straight. We had four of them briefly in the midfield, then coming across the line. Richard Wickland there in the 76 car, dicing with Gary Townsend and Simon Goddard. But uh, everyone else filing through across the line at the end of the first lap and just trying to settle down slightly. Harding has this eight-tenth of a second lead over Greensmith in second, Chandler third, then Roach Davies, Goddard, Murphy, Breland and Will Chappell back in the championship again in the top ten. Tom Collins rounds out the top ten and this is the five-tenth in fact. So Collins, then Goddard and Wickland and the rest. Right then, everyone at the front of the field just trying to settle into some sort of a rhythm then. This is a circuit that does produce great racing and the slipstream effect, particularly around the oval part of the track, keeps the field quite tightly bunched together. So we should be in for three cracking races here at Rockingham this weekend. Down towards Kirby we go. We're on the full international super sports car long layout. So we hang a right through Piff Path and then down through this double apex left-hander at Kirby, which is tricky. It's slightly off cam, but you need, don't really need to bother too much about the first apex. Just concentrate on hitting that second apex and then climbing uphill towards Gracelands. And this is a very difficult corner. High speed off camber through the left hander. Here are the leaders. A look at Tom Roach. He continues to move forward. He's now found a way past the reigning Mark 1 champion, Brian Chandler. So he's into the top three, would you believe? There in the background is James Blake Baldwin, just in behind Steve Dolman. In the foreground, Gary Townsend and Simon Goddard are still dicing. And Gary's finally found a way through, only to run wide at the Tarzan hairpin and allow Goddard back ahead of him. And possibly even Richard Wickland as well. Well, Richard is alongside Gary Townsend as they make their way down towards the, uh, the Brook Chicane. But the inside line is held by the yellow machine and so Gary Townsend it is who will prevail so back out towards the end of the second lap of the race and things at the front of the field calming down slightly but the question now I suppose becomes how high up the order can Tom Roach get it is really really important that Tom tries to maximize the opportunity here with James Blake Baldwin down the order James has had a very consistent season so far at the moment um, he, uh, he hasn't really been out of the top five all year so this will count as one of his two drop scores so it's not the end of the world for James but still opportunity knocking here for Tom Roach to maybe try and take some points out of him James Aspinall here heads down towards the Dean Herp he's got Carl Garner there in the white, grey and orange number 19 car behind him. These two having a nice dice for, I think that's about 14th position. Leaders filing their way through Chapman Kerr. There's Will Chappell. And there in 10th place is Tom Collins. 11th Simon Goddard, 12th Gary Townsend. So I have James Blake Baldwin, I think 17th position uh, uh, So the moment. There he goes, damaged to the rear of the car after that contact with Chapman Kerr. I didn't see who got into the back of him, but uh, there was certainly contact in the car. Fishtail this way and that. He so nearly had it saved, didn't he? But James Blake Baldwin, unfortunately, has now got real, real work to do to try and salvage something from this race. And of course, the grid for race two, perhaps more importantly, is decided based on the results from this race. Tom Roach has just set the fastest lap of the race. That's also worth the points. And he's now on the inside of Johnny Greensmith. That's worth more points as well so Greensmith now down to third or is he he's fighting back on the exit of the Tarzan hairpin now remember Johnny could be set to gain from this as well because he's third place in the championship going into this weekend 33 points off the championship lead so he could still be a factor but he really needs Roach and Blake Baldwin to both run into some serious trouble this weekend we've got three races here at Rockingham three next time out at Silverstone then that is it that is will decide the outcome of the championship it's Michael Lawson making a return in the championship too he is uh, just in behind Jim Hart in the number 27 car making their way up towards the left-hander at Graceland. Greg Catton, the number 13 car, the orange machine in front of them too. And then down towards the Tarzan hairpin, one of the best overtaking opportunities on the circuit, this. And no one quite close enough in this little group anyway to, uh, to make a move on this particular occasion. Tricky to get out of that corner right as well. It's very, very flat indeed. Now, this is the front, or it's for second place, not quite the front of the field. Jack Harding has checked out. There he is up the road. Tom Roach, Johnny Greensmith, uh, Brian Chandler, Liam Murphy, and a uh, pole sitter, remember, Jamie Goddard, all tied together. These five cars all trying to fill out the lower positions on the podium. Up towards Chapman Curb they go. Roach still has this second place at the moment but Johnny Greensmith will be keen to try and get through we've seen a real resurgence uh, from Johnny Greensmith through the second half of 2016 as he's got more and more to grips with this car Brian Chandler behind him of course having his first ever race in a Mark 3 car as we said early on he is the reigning Mark 1 champion he's had lots of success in uh, Mazda MX-5 Mark 1 racing also been racing in BMWs a little bit this year oh, a spin for Roy Stevenson down at the Dean Hairpin but luckily he's able to get going again so no need for a safety car intervention down towards Tarzan. Oh, Chandler's up the inside of Johnny Greensmith. He's into the side of Johnny Greensmith. And uh, Johnny luckily hangs on. I say luckily because had Brian gained from that, then that might have been frowned upon by the clerk of the course. But uh, as it is, the position stayed the same. And in fact, it's actually uh, Brian who's slowed down on the next of the corner. He's defending now from Liam Murphy on the running towards the Brookshire Came. Brilliantly turned out car that by Brian Chandler. But it's, it's already looking a little bit second-hand, isn't it? Out onto the 
banking they go again. And Liam Murphy's just maybe nearly got the nose up the inside then coming on to the uh, pit straight eight laps have been completed in 20 minutes we reckon we'll get 12 laps in so four more laps to go and Liam Murphy's around the outside of Brian Chandler through the banking but this then becomes the outside again for the Dean Hairpin so difficult to make this move stick it's a battle on the brakes Chandler on the inside line you'd imagine will hang on unless Liam Murphy can get the switch back which he can't because he actually got Jamie Goddard trying to get up the inside of him as well so he couldn't turn straight across the bowels of the car behind him lest they uh, make contact so they um, managed to keep it clean but the positions don't change hands this is Jim Hart fending off Michael Lawson again down into the uh, Brooks chicane it's been a great battle further down the order hasn't it and uh, a few Masters drivers in this group too like David Willoughby behind number 41 as well Back out onto the pit straight we go again. And the slipstream now starts to take effect through the flat out left hander at turn one, the banking, past the old chicane and up towards the braking zone of the Dean Hebbing. You can see why it's so difficult to defend down here because it is so, so wide and Michael Lawson is leaving an invitingly sized gap on the inside line there for David Willoughby to maybe find a way through but Michael is much later on the brakes. In fact, he closes right back in on Jim Hart again so uh, the gap's ebbing and flowing in this nice little scrap that's going on further down the order, further up the order. This is for third position and as Johnny Greensmith and Brian Chandler have set two fighting over this third place, they've allowed Tom Roach just to escape up the road. So Jack Harden leading the way. Tom Roach is in second. We're going on to the final lap of the race. So one more lap to go for Jack Harding. He's caught this absolutely huge advantage now of about six seconds over Tom Roach in second place. And he could be on his way to his first ever Super Cup win. Further down the order, some nice battles going on here. Steve Dolman in the Paul Sheard racing car. And Ray Worley there, who is the Masters points leader coming into this weekend, also getting involved. Back to the front, though. And for fourth position with three abreast, with Chandler on the inside and round the outside of both he and Liam Murphy is going Jamie Goddard. Jamie started on the pole but didn't really get a great start. He got shuffled back and he got shuffled off the track there coming out of Dean by Liam Murphy. So uh, he's not going to be able to gain any ground on that particular occasion. Jack Harding has no further ground to gain though. He just needs to coast this one home. He's got a huge lead. There's no need to really push on but drivers always say that as soon as they start backing off and taking it easy that's when they start to make mistakes. So he'll keep the pressure going right to the chequered flag. Speaking of keeping the pressure going Steve Dolman diving up the inside side of Simon Orange there into the Dean Heaven. That was a really nice move. Whoops, nearly throws it away on the exit of the corner, but uh, gathers it together nicely. Leaders down towards Tarzan. Leader singular, really, heading down to Tarzan. And in the number 43 machine, Jack Harding is about to head up towards the Brook Chicane and uh, take, it looks like, his first ever Mazda MX-5 Super Cup win. It's fitting that that car should do this on an oval, isn't it? A Richard Petty-inspired livery. And he comes out onto the banking at Rockingham for the final time. Jack Harding, right up against the concrete wall, is going to see the chequered flag. And you know what? I think he's quite happy with that. Jack Harding is a winner in the Mazda MX-5 Super Cup. It's been great to follow how strong he's been uh, and how quickly he's been progressing over the last few years. And finally, he gets that win. Tom Roach is second. Valuable, valuable result that is for him. And John Greensmith back on the podium in third with Brian Chandler fourth, Liam Murphy fifth, sixth for Jamie Goddard, John Davies back in the championship in seventh, ahead of Will Chappell in eighth, ninth position there uh, across the start finish line was Tom Collins and James Blake Baldwin crucially gets into the top ten. This is the fight further back between Ray, Ray Worley, Simon Fleet and the number 77 machine of Jeremy Crook. They're fighting over 20th position overall but as ever in the MX-5 Super Cup battling wherever you look up and down the order. Everyone's got someone to play with and Ray Worley knows that better the most because he's been competing in this championship for several years now. So too of Simon Fleet and uh, Jeremy Crook though. Out onto the banking we go. Jeremy trying to get the run on Simon up towards the chequered flag. He's carrying more momentum. He pulls himself alongside but Simon Fleet just about holds on to what is 21st position. In first position though it's Jack Harding. A very very happy Jack Harding indeed and the AK Automotive driver, the sole remaining AK Automotive driver in the championship takes the race win. Second is Tom Roach, five and a half seconds back in the end ahead of Johnny Greensmith. Third, Brian Chandler fourth, Liam Murphy fifth, then Jamie Goddard, John Davies, Will Chappell, Tom Collins and James Blake Baldwin. Simon Goddard and Richard Breland are next up ahead of Gary Townsend, Richard Wickle and James Aspinall, then David Henderson, Carl Garnett, Steve Dolman, Simon Orange and Ray Worley. Simon Fleet, Jeremy Crook, Alex King, Jim Hart and David Willoughby ran out of the top 25 ahead of Greg Catton, Roy Stevenson, Michael Lawson and Ian McDonald at the back. Yeah, it was um, a tough race. It might have looked easy from the front, but no, it was really, really tough. Um, first few corners, there was a bit of contact. I uh, just managed to get a break then and pull away. We knew we had the pace um, to lead the race. We were really, really consistent. We didn't get pulled, but we knew our times were going to be consistent. So, yeah, it was really, really good. We got away. And that was it really, didn't really look back, but... 
Yeah, I thought we were going to catch him at one point. I had a, a good start. It was a bit manic the first lap. We managed to get through. Um, yeah, and Carl always feels good the first half of the race, and we kind of caught up, but then got in a bit of a battle with Johnny and Jack had gone. And, and fair play, well done, Jack. He, he drove really well. He didn't make any mistakes. And I thought I thought he might. You know, it's the first time he'd been leading all, all the race. And, um, but no, he, he drove really well. Jonathan, back on the podium. That's three in a row now for you. It's uh, looking like a regular occurrence, but uh, very tricky in that battle for third place. Yeah, really tricky. Uh, Carl went off in a big fashion. So Brian did well, even Jack did. He had legs on me from the start anyway, so I thought it was just blinding me time and just keep consistent if I could like. But then I saw Tom chasing me down and I thought, oh, I'll just let him go and see if we can catch Jack together like and stuff. But it didn't happen. I just, he just went off. So not, not confident with the car at the minute. Well, after a breakthrough win in race one for Jack Harding, he's now looking to repeat the performance in race two. That's coming up after the break. Hello and welcome back to Rockingham where race two for the Mazda MX-5 Super Cup is about to get underway. In race one we saw Brian Chandler getting stuck straight in on his debut. Let's find out what brought him to the series. Fortunately for me, Andrew, Andrew Cad let me um, let me use his car for the weekend. So thanks to Andrew and seriously MX5 um, for the loan of the car. And yeah, to, this is just really a, a learning weekend to see see what the car's like, what it's about, if the car's quick. Um, so yeah, so really impressed with the cars. You know, like I say, really impressed with the racing. I've been watching it all season, obviously, but um, but this is the first time that I've been fortunate to get out. P4 on the grid for race two. So maybe in contention for a podium if it works well. Uh, yeah, it could do. Obviously, the guys up the front are, are class, so they're they're absolutely hard to get past. You know, the the middle of the race, to be fair, was so slow where Tom had backed everybody up that um, that it was it was ridiculously slow. Um, but obviously, he's fighting for a championship, needs to hold position. So so yeah, it was to to be fair, you just had to sit there. Really, it was it was quite a slow race, really. Um, but yeah, yeah, pleased with where I am. So then, let's see what Brian can get up to in race number two. He starts this one from the outside of row number two. Let's have a look at how the whole grid lines up. It is Jack Harding and Tom Roach on row one. Johnny Greensmith lines up alongside Brian on row two. Liam Murphy and Jamie Goddard on the third row with John Davies and Will Chappell on row four. Tom Collins and James Blake Baldwin, who's now lost the championship lead, lines up on row five ahead of Simon Goddard and Richard Breeland. Then it's Gary Townsend and Richard Wickham, James Aspinall and David Henderson on row eight. This is a really important race. Watch for the blue and orange striped car of James Blake Baldwin starting down in 10th on the grid. He has to make good progress with Roach on the front row of the grid. Away we go. And again, it's a fairly evenly matched start from both the front row men. Slightly less congested running to turn one this time, I'd say, than we saw in the first race. Harding running wheel to wheel with Tom Roach through the first corner. But up towards the Dean Hairpin, this is where it can all kick off. James Blake Baldwin, I see in the middle of the pack, has been hung out to dry down in towards the braking zone. We go, there's Gary Townsend making a move up the inside. And he's very late on the brake and he can't stop the car and he hits Liam Murphy. Gary Townsend and Liam Murphy both spin in front of the pack. Now let's hope everybody misses him. We were riding on board there with Jamie Goddard. Tom Collins came sneaking through on the inside. And well, Gary and Liam seem to have been avoided by the pack. But they're right at the back of the pack now with a lot of work to do. Harding has the race lead. Roach is second. Greensmith third. Brian Chandler fourth. John Davies fifth. And already up into sixth position is James Blake Baldwin. That was my next question as to whether James Blake Baldwin got held up in that. As it happened, the fact that he got hung out to dry at the start paid off for him because it meant he went round the outside of all of that chaos on the hairpin and now he's going up the inside of John Davies so that now is another position game for James Blake Baldwin remarkably he's already into the top five chasing on after the championship contenders in front of him we are riding on board with Brian Chandler just behind two of them Tom Roach and Johnny Greensmith and Roach holding on to second position at the moment but Jack Harding is only just managing to hang on to the race lead down towards the Tarzan hairpin we go there was a chink of an opening on the inside for Tom Roach to take but he didn't quite have the commitment to go for it this time though, round the outside comes uh, James Blake Baldwin, there's grip round there he might be able to get the inside line on the run down towards the chicane, he doesn't need it, he's already gone through so James Blake Baldwin with an astonishingly good first lap from 10th up to 4th oh and Greg Catton unfortunately has beached it in the gravel that looks to be Tarzan hands off the wheel as if almost that he feels that wasn't really his fault, that was a very exasperated looking Greg Catton, so Greg is off the road, that may require a safety car but not before, James Blake Baldwin has possibly moved through into a podium position, we've only completed one lap and James Blake Baldwin is 
come from 10th to third ahead of the man who was doing all of the overtaking last time out of Donington Park, Johnny Greensmith. Speaking of overtaking, look for the race lead. It's side by side. Tom Roach got up the inside of Jack Harding. He's going through into the race lead into the Dean Hairpin. So now Tom Roach takes the lead. He's seen James Blake Baldwin coming and knows how important it is for him to try and keep that blue and orange number two car at bay. James is a former Mark 1 champion. Tom Roach, a multiple Mark 1 champion, has never won a championship though in a Mark 3. Uh, hands are coming out of the cockpit though because the safety car flags and boards are out. And that is because of Greg Catton's car, presumably in the gravel of the Tarzan hair. So we put this on hold momentarily with Tom Roach, the race leader, Jack Harding in second, and James Plate Baldwin remarkably up to third place, having started on the fifth row of the grid. Well, Greg Catton's car has been removed from the Tarzan gravel trap. We are away and racing once more. Tom Roach has the race lead, but can he escape? That's easier said than done. Jack Harding, the man behind him at the moment, managed to do that in race one. He broke the toe. He let the rest of them squabble over the lower placings behind him and managed to build up nearly a six-second lead by the end. Can Tom Roach do the same? At the moment, the answer is no. He's defending. That's backing Jack Harding up and allowing James Blake Baldwin to possibly bring himself into contention as well. Out of the Dean Hairpin we go. The top three getting away already from Johnny Greensmith, Brian Chandler and John Davies dicing over fourth up towards the end would avoid that big sausage curb on the inside of that corner and most of the other corners in fact here at Rockland because that can tip the car over certainly will lose you time James Blake Baldwin not wanting to waste any time here is he? he's in behind the race one winner Jack Harding who in turn it seemed at the restart at least was a bit quicker than Tom Roach but that's just the slipstream isn't it bunches everyone up down towards the Dean Hairpin now we're on the infield section of the lap it looks like Roach is getting away again certainly because Jack Harding is defending from uh, James Blake Baldwin and the rest behind so it's now once more a six car train essentially for the race lead we're on board with the car that's fifth in this line and that's Brian Chandler enjoying I think his debut in the MX-5 Super Cup isn't he Brian hasn't done as much MX-5 racing as he might have liked in 2016 but he's not race rusty is he he's right in behind Johnny Greensmith couldn't get any closer and thought about going up the inside in front of him though James Blake Baldwin is up the inside of Jack Harding and James Blake Baldwin has got through into second position the fight back continues runs a bit wide on the extra of the corner but he has gone through Greensmith fending off Chandler for the time being Will Chapel there in the uh, next blue car in line uh, in seventh position is also catching this lot but what we have now is a situation where the top two in the championship are the top two in the race Tom Roach comes into this race just a solitary point ahead of James Blake Baldwin so essentially whoever finishes higher out of those two in this race will go into the final race of the day uh, as the championship leader with three more races still to come at Silverstone in a few weeks time so Roach leads the way Blake Baldwin Harding Greens with Chandler Davies and even Will Chapel. now you could say a part of this lead group then there is a bit of a gap back to Simon Goddard in 8th, Tom Collins is in ninth, and Jamie Goddard's in 10th but here comes the first attack for the race lead from James Blake Baldwin looking to the outside of Tom Roach down towards the Dean Hairpin, can't get through there but he's certainly he's carrying this momentum through the field isn't he and he will be determined to find a way past Tom Roach up towards the right hander at Yentwood inch perfect for all of this lead group through that part of the circuit there are Tom Collins and Jamie Goddard towards the back end of the top 10 but Tom Roach does not seem quite as quick here does he as James Blake Baldwin and what James doesn't want here is Jack Harding get on, getting onto his coattails and starting to become a thorn in his side he wants to try and get past Tom Roach as quickly as possible if he feels he has the pace to escape at the front of the field then by far and away the safest place to be is out in front not sandwiched in the middle of the group here is uh, some of the fighting going on further back among several of the masters and the recovering Cary Townsend and Liam Murphy who tangled remember at the Dean Hairpin oh speaking of tangling there's contact there between Tom Roach and James Blake Baldwin down towards the Tarzan Hairpin Blake Baldwin gets into the back of Roach once twice and they're side by side on the next of the corner Tom Roach has sensed wasn't quite as quick as Blake Baldwin and James has sensed that as well but look it's left him hung out to dry down towards the chicane Jack Harding's up the inside of him now down in towards the left hander the road then goes right but then left again onto the banking can Harding hang it tough around the outside yes he can fantastic driving that from Jack Harding you read the situation perfectly in front of him and he's possibly going to move back through into second place watch for Johnny Greensmith as well he's carrying good momentum and look at how long this leading queue of cars is two four six eight ten eleven cars all capable of finishing inside the top five positions and the championship battle is going on right at the head of it Tom Roach has the lead second place is now possibly going to be Jack Harding again with Johnny Greensmith coming up the inside too then we've got to turn left in a minute we're hard on the brakes in towards the Dean Hairpin Roach just about hanging on break Blake Baldwin goes around the outside Harding's on the inside Jack Harding into the back of Tom Roach Tom Roach runs wide and he takes Blake Baldwin out with him. Remarkable stuff. Jack Harding goes into the race lead and Johnny Green.
Smith moves through into second. There's more paint traded between Roach and Blake Ford, and it's all kicking off here at Rockingham. John Davies, Brian Chandler, and Will Chaplin now three abreast. Jamie Goddard doesn't know where to go, and we don't know where to look. But unbelievably, Jack Harding has snatched the race lead away. He got slightly into the back of Tom Roach through the Dean hairpin. Tom ran wide, but he had James Blake Baldwin to his outside. They both went out onto the grass, and they both lost ground. Everything still all up in the air, really, as they come down through Kirby. But it is Harding and Greensmith the top two. And crucially, Roach is still ahead of Blake Baldwin. It's just they're not first and second anymore. They're third and fourth. Wow, deep breath everybody, what a race this has turned out to be and it ain't over yet either because now Johnny Greensmith is sensing his opportunity maybe to take his second race win of his Super Cup career. Jack Harding of course is looking for the same thing as well. Then there is the championship battle between Roach and Blake Baldwin. John Davis has inherited a fifth place out of this at the moment with Will Chappell, Brian Chandler, Tom Collins and the rest all filing through and uh, hands back out of the cockpits because I think we're going to have another safety car. There was a car off, I think, wasn't there, down at the Tarzan hairpin again as they came through. Quite frankly, everyone, I think, was that um, occupied watching each other and continuing the frenetic dice at the front of the field that they would have been forgiven for missing it. But I think it was Steve Dolman that had been off at the side of the road. Yes, it is. And Dolman... Well, that's a strange place to have an accident, but I think he might have found the tyre wall. Let's see what happened to Steve. He's dicing with Gary Townsend and Liam Murphy. Gets on the throttle. Oh, overcorrects the slide and crunch straight into the tyre wall. The car gets airborne briefly. That was quite a substantial accident for uh, the slowest corner on the circuit. Steve Dolman, though, unfortunately, appears to be out of the race. So the safety car is out. What's going to happen next? Find out after the break. Hello and welcome back to Rockingham. Stand well back everybody because we've got a safety car restart. We've got a sprint to the flag on our hands here and what has already been a remarkably exciting race could be about to get even hotter. It is Jack Harding who leads the way in car number 43. Second place is Johnny Greensmith and Jack now accelerates out of the final corner. The safety car's pulled in. The green flag is waving again and Jack Harding is coming through as the race leader and looking for a double race victory here at Rockingham. One more race to go as well. And nine laps have been completed. We have expect there to be two more laps to go here in this race after that safety car interlude and the top four just breaking away slightly through turn one it's all about Tom Roach versus James Blake Baldwin though the two cars back battling over third place at the moment the green Blendini car and the blue and orange machine the Kent MX5 services car of James Blake Baldwin they are one point apart in the championship coming into this race in Tom Roach's favour and after this race we have only four races to go in the 2016 season James Blake Baldwin has seemed a bit quicker than Roach in this race though and he might be up the inside into Chapman no, Roach slammed the door in his face. Tom now, I think, has forgotten about chasing after the leading two. His main uh, target in this race is to keep James Blake Baldwin behind him at all costs. Down towards the double apex left-hander at Kirby. Harding from Greensmith is the battle for the race lead, but Jack Harding has had really impressive pace here this weekend. He was quick here last year as well uh, in wet and dry conditions, so it's clearly a circuit that Jack seems to quite like. Up the hill they go again towards Graceland. Remarkable, we've gone over half a lap with no change of positions. Surely that won't last to the flag. Out through that quick left-hander they go. It's Stacking up a bit behind John Davies for fifth, isn't he? You've got Will Chappell, Brian Chandler, Tom Collins, Jamie Goddard, Richard Wickland, pretty much everyone else in behind him. And in fact, Will Chappell there and Brian Chandler side by side coming through the Tarzan hairpin. Chandler on the outside was never going to make that work, or he might do actually. Oh, there's maybe a bit of contact as they come out of the corner. And Brian now has the inside line on the run down towards the Brooks chicane. And Brian Chandler, will he be able to go through? Yes, he does. So Brian Chandler picking up a position, but he's been shuffled down the order slightly after all of the chaos up at the Dean hairpin a few laps ago. Back out onto the bank and we go. We're about to start the final lap of the race. There is the last lap board and it's all about this fight for third again, isn't it? Look, Roach is immediately pulling down to the inside of the road to defend from James Blake Baldwin. The Dean hairpin is one of the best overtaking opportunities on the circuit and here comes the challenge from Blake Baldwin. He's in the toe. Is there a gap on the inside? No, Roach is making sure of that. So Blake Baldwin, if he's going to do it, he has to go right round the outside and he does go right round the outside. He's desperately late on the brakes. They almost lean on each other. Roach runs out a bit wide and somehow by the skin of his teeth holds onto the position. He runs wide on the exit of the corner but it matters little because the next corner is a right hander anyway and Tom Roach will have to defend on the way in watch for Blake Baldwin, let's get the switch back beautiful driving from James Blake Baldwin he's got the inside line now towards Chapman Curve and surely he's going to go through into third place but then he runs wide and Tom Roach is back up the inside again, phenomenal racing, this is what Master MX5 racing has always been like and it's why year after year it provides some of the best racing you'll see anywhere in the world, Tom Roach and James Blake Baldwin, two of the best
best in the business at the moment in Mazda MX-5 racing, doing battle for the championship, fighting over third place in this race, and it could still go either way up towards your, yeah, uh, Graceland's, excuse me, to go. Roach is weaving this way, and that's trying to keep James Blake Baldwin at bay. James going around the outside into Graceland's. That won't work. Roach is surely going to show him the edge of the road on the exit of the corner. Yes, he does. Blake Baldwin hangs tough, though. He's still there. He's got the inside line down towards the Tarzan hairpin. Oh, he locks on the front brakes. Can he stop the car? Just about. And now Tom Roach fights back on the exit again. They're both sideways. They're both out of shape. They are both giving it absolutely everything. There's more contact. And Roach slows. Tom Roach slows. Did he miss a gear? I'm not too sure, but Blake Baldwin's gone through. And crucially, so too of John Davis and Brian Chandler. Roach throws one back up the inside into the chicane, though he's back ahead. Tom Roach, how on earth did he save that one? That very nearly ended in tears. Jack Harding, by the way, is going to take his second win of the season. Second win of the day, in fact, here at Rockingham. Johnny Greens with his second. And James Blake Baldwin with a fighting third place. John, John Davies is in four and fifth position then for Tom Roach with Chandler, Chapel, Collins, Goddard and Wicklund rounding out the top ten. Well, I need to go and lie down in a darkened room after that. That was an incredible race. That was the championship battle heating up right in front of our eyes. We've got four more races of this to go, but that was the by far and away the hardest that Tom Roach and James Blake Baldwin have raced each other. You can see how much this championship means to both of them. Neither of them have won in a Mark III yet, a championship anyway, and they were really giving it absolutely everything. Fantastic to watch. Well, Jack Harding it is then who takes the race victory. Johnny Greensmith is a second behind him. That mattered little really though, did it? Because Blake Baldwin and, De and uh, Tom Roach provided most of the drama behind. Blake Baldwin was third, Davies fourth and Tom Roach in fifth. Outside the top ten, Jamie Goddard was 11th, James Aspinall 12th, then Breland. Liam Murphy fought back to 14th after his lap one spin ahead of David Henderson. Gary Townsend, who tangled with Liam on the first lap, was only 22nd and we lost, unfortunately, Steve Dolman and Greg Catton from what was a frenetic race. Tom was just trying to back everybody up so that I could get past James so there's more of a gap in the championship on points so we knew exactly what he was doing. Um, we came down into the hairpin and um, Tom's trying to back James up and I've gone in and like literally them two were squabbling so much on the outside I literally just got a little bit of a run there was a little bit of contact between all three of us and then just got a run on them out the corner and then obviously they carried on that battle after us but no you know and once I got in the lead, I knew that I could pull away, so because I've got the pace. So now it's really good. AK done a cracking job on the car again. Alan's driver tuition is what's brought me on this much, really. So it's been brilliant. The car were handling a lot better then. Got it sorted out. Um, I was just trying to keep out it all trouble and everything else. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, re good result. There's one secret that you went from fourth to second behind Jack. Just what happened in that sort of secret from your point of view? Everyone wanted the same bit of track. I think that's all what's happened and it's, it's just gone a little bit heated and that so we've just uh, I thought oh, I'll have that so I'll just sneak past keep my head clean and everything else that's all you got to do I think I think you've just got now towards the end of the year you just got to keep yourself clean and get to them results yeah unfortunately the first race didn't go to plan um, it ended up going right to the back of the grid due to someone tapping up the back and spinning me um, managed to get to 10th um, and start from the grid 10th and second race two um, and uh, finally got to third um, uh, with a huge battle with Tom. Of course from there it was sort of hip and shoulder all the way into between you guys but still a podium salvage so high up the good for race three? I hope so, um, we can only aim for first and uh, see how it goes but the guys here are, are quick drivers so um, you know, as long as I keep uh, Tom behind me then that's the main thing that matters. Cars heading out to the grid for what could be a crucial final race here at Rockingham. Join us after the break to see the next twist in the story of the 2016 Championship. Hello and welcome back to Rockingham Rare Race 3 for the Mazda MX-5 Super Cup is set to be every bit as intense as the first two were. First of all, let's take a look back at what happened in the Masters Championship in races 1 and 2. Well, as close as the fights were at the outright head of the field, the fighting within the Masters element was equally as exciting. It was Richard Breland who snatched the early advantage in race one before both Simon Goddard and Gary Townsend found a way past him. Those two were then locked in combat for the class win all race long, with Simon Goddard just about coming out on top. There was a nice battle further back between Greg Catton, Jim Hart and Michael Lawson, the three of those changing positions almost by the lap. Ray Worley also had a nice race long fight with Steve Dolman as well as Jeremy Crook and Simon Fleet. Steve Dolman was one of the most entertaining drivers in the race as he struggled to find a way past the 67 machine of Simon Orange. He also had a great dice with Ray Worley before Simon eventually succumbed to Steve's pressure down at the Dean hairpin. 
Ray then fell back into the clutches of Jeremy Crook and Simon Fleet as they fought for positions outside the top five. As close as race one was, race two didn't, didn't disappoint either. There was early drama though for Greg Catton who locked up going into the Tarzan hairpin, beaching his car in the gravel and bringing out the safety car. Jim Hart did battle with the 189 car of Roy Stevenson early doors. Jim involved in plenty of good scraps all race long, as too was Michael Lawson. That was until he spun at the Graceland's left-hander. The main attention in race two came from the fight for third between Simon Orange, Ray Worley, Simon Fleet, Steve Dolman, Gary Townsend and Jeremy Crook, amongst others at various points in the race. It was Simon Orange who came out on top, finishing third place within the Masters element of the race. Unfortunately, though, Steve Dolman's race ended with a big bang and off into the tyre wall at the Tarzan Hep, bringing out the second safety car of the race. Gary Townsend had two moments down at the Dean Hairpin, this one whilst he tried to find a way past Ray Worley, as he had a bit of a race to forget. When the chequered flag flew, though, the race victory went the way once more of Diamond Goddard with a ninth place finish overall. Let's have a look at how they line up for this one. It's an interesting grid. Johnny Greensmith is on the pole position. I'll explain why in a moment. With James Blake Baldwin alongside him, John Davies and Tom Roach row two, Brian Chandler and Will Chappell on row three with uh, Tom Collins and uh, race one and two winner Jack Harding down on row four. Then it's Simon Goddard and Richard Wicklin, Jamie Goddard and James Aspinall, Richard Breland and Liam Murphy with David Henderson and Carl Garnett rounding out the top 16. Jack Harding has been given a grid penalty after contact in race number one. So he has to, he keeps his race win, but he has to start down in eighth for this race. James Blake Baldwin was also given a penalty after race number one, but he gets to keep his now front row position. So here we go then, race number three at Rockingham underway, and James Blake Baldwin taking full advantage of his front row position to get his nose in front of Johnny Greensmith on the run down towards turn number one. Can he get his whole car in front though? No, he can't, so they'll run wheel to wheel through the first corner with Greensmith on the inside, Blake Baldwin on the outside, and then uh, the rest of them all filing through behind. John Davies and Tom Roach third and fourth respectively, on board with Jack Harding. That's uh, Brian Chandler in front of us returning to the corner. And there's a gap on the inside, and Jack takes it. And uh, Will Chapel there has gone around the outside of everybody from sixth on the grid, and he's up into nearly third place. Look, meanwhile, James Blake Baldwin has gone right around the outside of turn one and turn two to get the inside into Yentwood, and he uses that perfectly to take over the race lead. So it is Blake Baldwin that leads the way. Greensmith is second, Will Chapel is third, Tom Roach is fourth position, then Jack Harding already up from eighth to sixth. So a few new names now starting to appear towards the front of the field. Will Chapel, namely, in third position there. But what can Jack Harding do? Can he make it? A hat-trick of race wins. Ooh, Brian Chandler at the inside of John Davies there, but no, there's nothing doing. Oh, and he gets a bit too much of the curb on the exit of Kirby, and uh, Tom Collins gets a run on him up the hill. So on board with Jack Harding. A brilliant weekend it's been for him so far. How far up the order can he rise in this race? Through Graceland as they go drop off the edge of a cliff on the exit of the corner. It's very easy to run wide, as several drivers do. A few of them kicking up the dirt further back. Who's going to be the first one to duck out of line into Tarzan? None of the leading contenders, anyway. A bit of squabbling still going on further down the pack. There's Ray Worley trying to go on the outside of Simon Fleet into the Tarzan hairpin. Those two have spent much of the weekend together, it would seem. Leaders then leading two, Blake Baldwin Greens with getting away from Will Chappell in third. This is by far Will Chappell's best run of the year so far. He's running significantly higher up the order than he's used to. Um, but good to see him up there, nonetheless. You do wonder, though, don't you, how much longer we can keep Tom Roach behind him for James Blake Baldwin and Tom Roach. They both have very different plans in this race. Blake Baldwin, from the front now, wants to lead from the front, pull away from the rest and hope that a few cars finish between himself and Tom Roach. For Tom, he wants the opposite to happen. He wants to get past these two cars in front of him and get after James Blake Baldwin as quickly as possible. Easier said than done, of course, but uh, that's certainly what Tom will be trying to do on the brakes into the... Uh, Dean Hairpin, and again, no one quite close enough to duck out of line and go for the move. After a rather robust second race, let's say, uh, the drivers, I think, minding their P's and Q's at the start of this third race of the weekend. I'm sure things will liven up, though, as we go on, because uh, with the championship as finely poised as it, as it is, Tom Roach and James Blake Baldwin, in particular, can't afford to give away any points in this race. Tom has a five-point advantage coming into this one. Johnny Greensmith, incidentally, in third place in the championship, is still in, in contention, but he's 30 points off the championship lead, so he really needs to beat both James and Tom in all four of the races left in the championship this one here at Rockingham and the three at Silverstone to have a chance now that was a mistake there from Will Chappell and you sensed it was coming Tom Roach was applying the pressure and Tom Roach has now gone through so Roach through into third position Jack Harding has followed him through the gap great stuff that from Jack and yet in the mirrors we can see he's made the move stick on Will Chappell so put Tom Roach into third Jack
Jack Harding fourth and Will Chapel is sideways and therefore slow off Gracelands and yes Liam Murphy was never going to say no to that opportunity he goes up the inside into Tarzan but Will is late on the brakes and just about gets the car stopped so he hangs on to the position so he loses two positions but he's still inside the top five Liam Murphy the similarly similarly liveried car behind then John Davies in the silver machine He's running in seventh place. Big lock up there for Will Chapel. Need to be careful not to flat spot the tyres because then every time you hit the brakes from here on in, it will find that flat spot and you'll uh, keep on locking up. Back out of the final corner across the start finish line we go. Great shot from the starting gantry here as the field flashes through below us. You can see the good battles going on further back there. Whereas uh, the Will Chapel, Liam Murphy, and John Davies scrap heads through turn number one. And Liam Murphy is sensing an opportunity here, maybe to get up the inside down towards the Dean Hairpin. But uh, Will Chapel chops across his nose. And John Davies says, I want to join in this too. And goes flying around the outside of the pair of them because they all stop into the Dean Hairpin. Well, none of them even attempt to hit the first apex. And actually, only John Davies really finds the second one just up the road from them, by the way. Jack Harding's now found a way past Tom Roach. Look, there he is. He's into third place now. So Tom Roach gets demoted another spot now. So he's back into fourth. And there are once more two cars between James Blake Baldwin and Tom. So Jack Harding, of course, going for race wins and good results. Not worried about the championship. Here's how he did it. Got a good run through turn one. Just about found a gap up the inside. He's late on the brakes, down the gears. And that was a brilliantly judged move, that. And Tom Roach, of course, he wants to try and finish as high up the order as possible to try and score as many points as possible. But he can't afford a non-finish. So uh, this is making things really, really tense for Tom. He needs to go on the attack. But he has to really be careful how much he does attack. So Lee Liam Murphy and Will Chapel now running wheel to wheel down towards the Brooks Chicane. Chapel on the right, Liam Murphy on the left, and Murphy trying to go right around the outside. Oh no, and he loses it. Liam Murphy loses the back of the car. I don't think there was contact between the two of them there. Liam just got out onto the marbles, onto the dirty side of the road, and ends up pointing the wrong way on the grass. And now he's got to wait for a, a spot in line. He finds one, but uh, he's lost an awful lot of positions. The number 19 machine going through there. Uh, as well uh, of Carl Garnett so that's uh, plenty of places lost unfortunately for Liam Murphy here are some of the squabbles further down the order Simon Goddard here Richard Greeland and uh, Gary Townsend so uh, these three dicing amongst the uh, masters element of the race Breedland looks to have got a good run out of yet but is he up the inside into Chapman Curve that's a place you can go through but no I don't think he's quite got up the inside has he yeah, they flick it through the very quick left right section through Piff Path and then down towards the bottom of the hill, the lowest point of the circuit at Kirby. Oh, Richard Breeland with a very wide line there in the Team Blink car. Now, meanwhile, look at the way Jack Harding has latched onto the tail now of Johnny Greensmith. So this is for second position, would you believe, from eighth on the grid. We saw James Blake Baldwin do this, didn't we, in uh, race number two, came from tenth to third. And briefly, of course, had a stint leading the race. Well, now Jack Harding's trying to go from eighth into second place if he can. Finding way past Johnny Greensmith is not going to be easy, but uh, uh, Johnny all on his own thus far in the race. This is really the first competition he's had. James Blake Baldwin has been able to pull away at the front of the field. Jack Harding here looking for second place. And he's even got time. If he gets past Greensmith quickly, he could just have time to go after James Blake Baldwin. We're only just into the second half of the race, so uh, there is an opportunity here, as long as he doesn't lose too much time here, that he could go after the race lead. Look, he's just had the fastest lap as well, 144.502. It's a bit uh, slower than the previous fastest laps in other races, but it's still pretty rapid nonetheless. Now, once more, he gets a good run through turn number one, but Greensmith gets the inside to defend which is something Tom Roach couldn't do a few laps ago Harding will try and get the late apex here and carry speed down towards Yentwood that sort of seems to work there may be a slight overlap on the run down towards the right hander but again Greensmith has the inside line and drifts across the normal racing line on the way in as well so as not to be compromised on the exit of the corner Jack Harding though is almost within touching distance of this second position as it is he's on for two wins and a third he'd love to make that two wins in a second maybe even three wins in a row through the piff path sequence we go once again Kirby is a possible overtake opportunity if there's a gap on the inside but no Greensmith had it covered all and then runs a little bit wide though that opens the door beautifully for Jack Harding and another really well judged move Jack Harding goes through into second and he wants now uh, for Johnny Greensmith to work with him to see if maybe the pair of them together can be quick enough to catch up to the race leader James Blake Baldwin Across the line we go. The last lap board is out and well, can Jack Harding get there? He's been closing in inexorably onto the tail of the number two machine out in front. Blake Baldwin, I think, just about has enough in hand, but Jack Harding is throwing everything he has at trying to get his third race win. Look, the gap is down to 1.4 seconds now. Greensmith is still third, Roach is fourth, then Collins and Chandler still dicing over fifth. And actually, John Davies still not far behind them either. So eighth is uh, Jamie Goddard, ninth Will Chapel, then James Aspinall, Richard Breland, and Richard Wickland round out the top 12. Simon Goddard and 
Liam Murphy are only 13th and 14th. Liam after his earlier spin, of course, out of uh, Yentwood, up towards Chapman Curve goes the race leader. And you can see visibly that Harding is getting closer with every corner that goes by, but I just don't think he's quite got enough time. Maybe another lap or so, and he might have been able to get there. Here is that Murphy, Goddard and Townsend scrap. The yellow flags out at the Dean Herbins. There must be a car off in a dangerous position. Can't see it, but it possibly was down the escape road and driver getting out of harm's way. And this is the Tom Collins, Brian Chandler, John Davies scrap further up the road. Fantastic racing wherever you look. Uh, and they've been caught by Jamie Goddard as well. Will Chappell, unfortunately, has lost several places throughout the middle portion of the race. So he's dropped to the back of that group. Ooh, Tom Collins defends the inside line. Chandler tries the outside, then will cut back and try and carry speed up the hill towards Curb, uh, towards the Gracelands. But this is the race leader. And James Blake Baldwin, it's been a real up and down race weekend for him, hasn't it? He had uh, that penalty applied uh, points on his license and he lost some championship points as well after race two which is why despite the fact he beat Tom Roach he's still five points behind him in the points uh, coming into this race but this one there will be no doubt over James Blake Baldwin has only one more corner to go a corner he is neg negotiating now in perfect style until he sees the check and flag out against the concrete wall and James Blake Baldwin will make uh, a fantastic step towards taking the championship. He takes the checkered flag. Jack Harding is second, and Johnny Greensmith is there in third position. And with Tom Roach down in fourth, that will tighten things up to within, I reckon, a point or two between the two of them heading into the finale at Silverstone. These are the fights further back. Richard Breeland dicing with Richard Wicklin. Richard having his best result of the weekend here. He's trying to get himself into the top ten. Up and uh, across the line we go. And Richard Breland finishes in front of him. So uh, holds on to that position for the time being. But it is going to be James Blake Baldwin who takes the race victory. And this is confirmation of that result. Harding in second, Greensmith in third, then Roach and Collins, Brian Chandler, John Davies, Jamie Goddard, Will Chapel, and James Aspinall rounds out the top ten. Outside the top ten, Richard Wickland, Liam Murphy, then Simon Goddard was the winning master again with Richard Breland second. Carl Garnett, David Henderson, Gary Townsend, Jeremy Crook, Steve Dolman and Ray Worley round out the top twenty. We lost Simon Orange, Roy Stevens. And Simon Fleet and Alex King from what was by far the quietest race so far of the weekend. Yeah, it's, it's, been, it's not been a great weekend to be honest to me, uh, with all the results that have been going backwards and forwards. Uh, but no, Chris at Kenton Mix Five has done an amazing job, um, and it, it you know it all came uh, came to right in the end. Leave this weekend behind then into Silverstone. It's pretty much battle lines drawn now, isn't it? Yeah, so I think it's going to come down to the last round. I've got no idea where the points are between uh, Tom Roach and I, um, but it's going to be close. Yeah, I nearly did the uh, all three. I was hoping for it, one more lap maybe. Um, I just got past Johnny and the car started yeah. to go off, so I couldn't catch at the same rate as what I was doing before. Um, but I just slowly creeped in and maybe another lap would have had him, but no, two wins in a second, I can't complain really. Yeah, not too bad. Could have been better if it were on the top spotlight, but uh, can't win them all, to be honest with you. Um, car's not 100%, just struggling a bit round here. Uh, I don't like the circuit anyway, so I've got a little bit of excuses. But now, good weekend, some solid points, like you say. So, yeah, good. Yeah. Well, with three races to go next time out at Silverstone to decide the championship, it could not be closer. James Blake Baldwin has just a single point advantage over Tom Roach after three cracking races here at Rockingham. Johnny Greensmith in third can still win it, but at 29 points back, he needs some luck. So, there we have it. Three races done at Rockingham, just three more still to go. And they all take place at Silverstone on the national circuit in October. Who's going to be the champion? James Blake Baldwin, Tom Roach? Or maybe somebody else. We'll have to wait and see. Join us next time. And in the meantime, you can head to mx5supercup.co.uk for all the information. It's going to be a close one. Join us there. Bye for now.